It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. It seems important to start question period today with the commitment that the Premier made to parents of children with autism when he was looking for votes during the election campaign, and I quote, we will be there to support you 1,000 per cent. I promise you, you won't have to be protesting on the front of Queen's Park like you have with the Liberal Premier. Today, those parents are here, and they're protesting on the front lawn of Queen's Park. What does the Premier have to say to them today? Premier. Well, for, through you, Mr. Speaker, I've talked to hundreds of parents with uh, families, with children with autism, and it, and, it, and it breaks my heart talking to them. This is, this is, as I've said over and over again, Mr. Speaker, this is the hardest file I've ever dealt with, bar, bar none. But when we came into office, we saw a bankrupt system when it comes to supporting families with children with autism. They, they, they actually, we had to run to the Treasury. We had to run to the President of the Treasury right here to ask for $100 million just to keep the system going. Then when we looked into it even further, we saw systemic problems throughout the whole system. The previous government put $256 million. Response. Put $256 million in, Mr. Speaker. We boosted that up to $321 million to help these families. Supplementary. Well, Speaker, I think I need to remind the Premier that it's not about him, and it's not about how he feels. It's about how the people of this province, the children with autism, feel. That's what this is about. And these parents are here because the Premier's plan is an absolute disaster. Some are looking at bankruptcy, deep, deep debt, uprooting their families and leaving the province just so that they can get the therapies and treatments that their children need. This kind of support that the Premier promised, promised during the election campaign that he would provide. Will the Premier do the right thing today, Speaker, and scrap this scheme and develop a new plan with new investments to actually meet the needs of children like he promised? Uh, Minister of Children and Community Social Services. Members, please take your seats. The question has been referred to the Minister of Children, Community and thank Social Services. Thank you very Services. much, Speaker, and thank you very much, Premier, for your leadership on this file since taking office to ensure that the bankrupt system that we inherited would make it, sh make it through to support the 8,400 children currently on the list so that we can move forward in clearing the wait list of 23,000 children. Three out of four children in the province of Ontario have been denied service by their Ontario government, and we are changing that. That party opposite used to support clearing the wait list until this government supported doing so. So that party over there supported direct funding until this government here decided we were going to go to that model. And that party over there supported order. going to regulating Opposition service providers until this government decided to move forward with that. I want to know from the member opposite, what's your Secretary plan, Cumbor. what's it going to cost us, and why didn't she implement it during the last, uh, last uh, um, platform? Number for Waterloo, $3 billion dollar shy budget. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's not in it for the children. Spons. She's in it for professionally protesting. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, hurling insults at parents that are coming here to fight for their children is a disgusting tactic by this minister. And may I remind her that in three and a half years' time, when the NDP forms government, we will help families and children with autism. <laughs> parents deserve so much more than what they've gotten from this government. The government's new scheme pulls supports away from parents who desperately need it, away from their children who desperately need it. And it denies treatment to thousands of children unless they can come up with ten th tens of thousands of dollars from their parents' pockets that those parents just don't have. And instead of admitting that they were wrong, this Ford government has threatened, bullied, and failed to deliver on his promises to parents. Last night, the government showed Question. that they can reserve, or rather reverse, a bad decision. That was shown last night. Maybe they could do the same thing this time. So will the Premier do exactly that and scrap this scheme, fire this minister? And come back with a plan. 
Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. Since assuming office, this government has done a number of things in order to make sure we have a more fair, equitable and sustainable Ontario Autism Program. Unfortunately, the member opposite would like to continue to see a wait list of 23,000 children, three out of four children with autism in the province of Ontario. She would like to see um, uh, diagnostic hubs where there are tons of uh, children on the wait list. She would like to see an unregulated service provider situation that's occurring across the province of Ontario. We're not going to stand for that. That's why, since assuming office, I went to the Treasury Board was able to receive an extra $102 million in order to ensure that the program could continue to exist and move 8,400 children through the system as we prepare to, to uh, get 23,000 children who are being denied service by their Ontario government the service that they deserve. But I still haven't heard at any point in time Opposition any come to solution order. from Response. the members opposite with the exception of the things that we are delivering on. They asked us to clear the wait list. We're doing it. They asked us to regulate service providers. We're doing it. They asked us to go to a direct funding model. We're doing it. Thank you. Is. Next question. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is for the Premier, but I can say that what we would like to see and what these fa families would like to see is a government that keeps its promise to children and families when it comes to autism services. Late last night, Speaker, as you know, Ron Tavener declined his appointment as the OPP Commissioner. And while that was the right thing to do and the right thing for frontline OPP officers and the people of Ontario, it does not undo the Premier's role in this whole scandal. The need to clear the air and address some of the serious concerns about political interference is as great as it ever was. Will the Premier stop hiding and call a public inquiry today? Premier. Well, through you, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to thank the leader of the police hating party for the question. I have the highest degree of respect. Okay. I'm, going to, I'm going to have to caution the Premier. That sort of language is causing disruption in the House, obviously. You can't use it. Response. Yeah. I, I have the highest, the highest degree of respect for the front line police officers, the OPP, and all the police officers across this province. They put their lives on the line every single day to, to protect our communities and keep us safe. Since the beginning of this process, our objective has been new leadership up at the OPP to fix the systemic problems that we're hearing non-stop from the front-line OPP officers, and again, I've talked Under to hundreds to and hundreds of front-line police officers and OPP officers across this province, Mr. Speaker, and I can tell you the stories I've heard are appalling, are appalling, but we're going to fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, this isn't just about the job that Ron Tavener won't be taking. It's also about the job that was taken from former Deputy Commissioner Brad Blair. Right. It's clear that this was an act of reprisal by a Premier who can't handle dissent. We can now add Ron Tavener to the list of people who agree with Brad Blair's assessment that his appointment was bad for the OPP and bad for Ontarians. Does the Premier still want to argue that Brad Blair was wrong to raise those concerns, Speaker? Premier. I'll tell you, through you, Mr. Speaker, as far as the rank and file officers, they're concerned, and we must do better for them, and we will do better. We need a new vision for the OPP, one that puts the frontline officers and the safety of the people Position of Ontario above everything else. <laughs> Bring, bringing about this change. Bringing about this change at the OPP will require new leadership and a new vision. On behalf of our government, I want to thank Ron Tabner for putting his name forward. Member for and Essex, come I can, forward. I can tell you, after 50 years of an impeccable record, I found it disgusting, Mr. Speaker, how he was berated. He was attacked by the opposition, personally attacked Response. from a, for a person that served 50 years of protecting families, community service. Stop the clock. Or 
order. The member for Essex is warned. Warned. Start the clock. Final supplementary. Well, apparently, the Premier wasn't paying attention, Speaker. It was him we were attacking, uh, not uh, Ron Tavener or anybody else. And of course, and I would agree. I would, actually, I would actually agree with the Premier that Ontario does need a new leader. Definitely, we need a new leader. Yeah. The people of Ontario have a right to know how a friend of the Premier became the front runner for the top job when he didn't even qualify for the initial posting. And they want to know why a veteran officer with over, over three decades on the force Government lost side, his door. job about speaking out about his concerns. They didn't believe the Premier yesterday, and they don't believe him today, Speaker. A public inquiry will get the answers that Ontarians deserve. Will the Premier stop hiding and call one right now? Members, please take their seats. Premier. Mr. Speaker, it's unfortunate the opposition has chosen to politicize this process rather than focusing on and opposition supporting the frontline officers. They try to, they, all they try to do is get cheap political points on the backs of frontline officers on the backs of Superintendent Ron Tavner. But we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised. They have, they have never, ever supported our police. They've never supported our frontline men and women. I've never seen a more anti-police caucus than the one sitting across from us today. The NDP that is Premier, take your seat. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to caution the Premier because th that sort of language is causing grave disruption in the House, and I'm going to ask him to, to, to withdraw. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. The member for Essex. Speaker, to the Premier, for months the Premier has ignored concerns raised by decorated police officers about this appointment. He's brushed away the public concern about the conflict of interest surrounding Mr. Tavener's appointment as the OPP Commissioner. And last night, late without warning, Mr. Tavener suddenly withdrew his name. Will the Premier tell the people of Ontario what happened behind closed doors to prompt his withdrawal? Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker. I find it very ironic coming from the MPP from Essex that continuously sat in this chamber, Mr. Speaker, and criticized Superintendent Ron Tavner over and over and over again. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we support our police. We supported Ron Tavner. And do you know who I feel sorry for? Not just Ron Tavner, which is an absolute champion. I feel sorry for the hundreds of frontline OPP officers that I spoke to personally that were so excited, so excited to bring change to the highest ranks of the OPP, a gentleman that would actually watch their backs, have their backs, and protect the frontline police officers. That's who I feel sorry for. Supplementary. Speaker, this government and this Premier had every opportunity to come clean to the public, but instead of doing that, they have blustered, they threatened, and they bullied anyone who raised concerns. Will the Premier finally stop hiding and call a full and public inquiry into this matter? Premier? Through, through, through you, Mr. Speaker, again, I find it ironic coming from the MPP from Essex that criticized the police continuously. Another NDP member made racial slurs about the Toronto police chief. Who, who does that, Mr. Speaker? Who does that? Who picks up a sign and runs down the street? Order. Who picks up a sign and runs down the street and says F the police and still is sitting in caucus? It's unheard of. Order. I can tell you, if anyone did that in our caucus, they wouldn't be sitting in our caucus, but the leader of the opposition actually supports that language. They actually support when they say that to the police. That's unacceptable. Again, I say to the Premier, stop the clock. I say to all, all the members, the Speaker is not in a position to judge whether or not a statement is true or accurate or false in every case, but I would again caution all members that the, uh, that the tone of this debate is deteriorating and we do ourselves a disservice to the extent that we deteriorate our 
discussion or debate during question period into um, a series of personal insults. It, it impresses no one. Next question. I recognize the member for Etobicoke Centre. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services and Minister responsible for women's issues. Tomorrow is International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. However, there is still a tremendous amount of work to be done to ensure women feel safe in their communities and empowered across the province. We know now that one in three women will experience sexual violence in their lifetime. We also know that women are three times more likely to be stalked and three and a half times more likely to be a victim of intimate partner violence. This is unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, can the minister outline our government's efforts to empower women and combat violence against women across the province? Thank you. Minister responsible for women's issues. Thank you very much, Speaker, and thank you to the member uh, from Etobicoke for raising this very important issue on the eve of International Women's Day, which will be tomorrow. Uh, we are right now striving as a government to join the world effort to balance for better. Uh, this weekend, I will be uh, going to the United Nations with the Canadian delegation so we can dis uh, discuss, among other things, women's economic empowerment, sex trafficking, and violence against women. These are three key initiatives that have been a uh, priority for me and my ministry. Uh, that's why our government hosted early on a women's economic Empowerment Roundtable, which we are going to work with the Minister of Labour on for greater pay equity for women. Uh, that's why our government has invested an historic amount of money in violence against women and, and shelters across this province uh, to the tune of $174 million. And that's why tomorrow we will launch consultations with the member from Cambridge as well as the member from Mississauga Centre so that we can build on the important work of the Minister of Labour so we can eradicate sex trafficking or Ontario's dirty Response. little secrets in the province of Ontario. We're going to continue to do that, and I'm looking forward to a statement in the House later on this afternoon. Supplementary. Through you, Mr. Speaker, thank you, Minister, for your continued commitment to supporting survivors and raising awareness for this important cause. When we discuss violence against women, it's important we acknowledge victims of sex trafficking, Member which for disproportionately affects young women and girls. We learned late last week that three individuals were charged by Toronto Police Services for sexual assault and for trafficking a girl under the age of 18. Speaker, no person in this province should have to experience what that young woman endured. Can the minister please tell this House how our government is taking action to protect women and girls across the province from this heinous crime? Hmm. Minister. Thank you very much, Speaker. I do appreciate the supplementary. Sex trafficking in, in Ontario is our dirty little secret, and that's why we must continue to be vigilant against it, to continue to speak out against it, and ensure that we support survivors who we know are going to be the gateway to help us get those uh, children uh, to, to see awareness early, early on. Uh, so that is why we are engaging in roundtable discussions throughout this province with the member from Cambridge and the member from Mississauga Centre. Uh, we will be working interministerial with the Ministry of Attorney General, Labour, Transportation, Education, and health. Uh, I am co-chairing the federal provincial task table on uh, sex trafficking across the province. And as I mentioned uh, this Sunday, I will be traveling to the United Nations to discuss this issue. But let me be perfectly clear as we move Order. forward uh, to supporting women. Supporting women is very important. Strong women must support vulnerable women, but just as importantly, strong men must Opposition support vulnerable women. Thank Response. you. Thank you. Next question, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. No one believes in this government's autism program. Now, three of the regional service providers have spoken out. Principals, teachers, school boards around the province are against it. Advocates and experts think the new program will fail children and they're demanding changes. And parents themselves have been mobilized across the province to fight back. This government has introduced an astonishingly bad plan that has led to nothing so far but chaos. Why does the Premier insist on pursuing an autism plan that no one supports, and why will he not listen to the families who are here today? Members, please take their seats. Premier. 
The question is referred to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you very much, Premier. As mentioned many times in this House, my parliamentary assistant, Amy Fee, and I travelled across the province. We had over a dozen roundtables. We met with stakeholders, and uh, we, looked at, uh, we looked at the broken program that we inherited from the Ontario Liberal Party. What was unconscionable and unacceptable to me and to this government that three out of four children were languishing on a wait list that was endless with no hope in sight. Our priority, our motivation is to clear the wait list so children who were denied service from their Ontario government could get a helping hand and support from their province. 25 per cent of the children were the only ones that were being serviced. So what we've moved to is doubling the diagnostic uh, hubs, so that we, uh, the, the investment, so that we can get children diagnosed more quickly. We are going to a direct funding model where children will be eligible for up to $140,000 until they're 18 Opposition in order to order. Uh, receive the types of supports that they so desperately need, whether that's behavioral therapy, whether that is caregiver support, respite training, or technological aids. But, Speaker, our motivation is the 23,000 children who are not getting service. Thank you. Supplementary. This government has failed every step of the way. They created a plan based on a child's age and family income instead of what a child actually needs. They have strong-armed stakeholders, demanded endorsements, and used parents' quotes out of context. They froze an inflated wait list to make themselves look better. Their members have supported parents in private, only to backtrack in the public out of fear. They have abandoned all the families and kids that they stood up for when, under the last government and in the last election. It's not too late to do the right thing by families and rethink this plan. Will the Premier finally reconsider the changes to autism program? Members, please take your seat. Questions referred, referred to the Minister of Children and Social Services. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Uh, this will be the plan that we will implement on April the 1st, and I think it's irresponsible for the member's office to provide false hope uh, to parents that this, this plan will change. We have invested an historic amount of money, $321 million, into a program to clear the wait list, go to a direct funding model, and ensure that there are greater standards for, Hamilton Mountain come to order. for those service providers. We have done everything that the NDP has asked for in the past, and we're going to who have autism, not just 25 per cent of the children. I think it's important that we clear that wait list for 23,000 children who you heard that. The member for Hamilton Mountain will withdraw. withdraw. Minister should conclude her answer. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I just want to be perfectly clear that on April the 4th, 5th, uh, sorry, April the 1st, this will be the plan that we implement, and this will be the plan that moves forward, and we'll make sure Order. that easy transition to the education system. Thank you very much. Next question, the member for Thornhill. Our government for the people has been clear in its commitment to get the people of Ontario moving. The gridlock in the province is unacceptable and making it difficult for Ontarians to get from point A to point B in a timely manner. Ontarians are stuck in their vehicle or on transit far longer than they should be. It takes away valuable time that could be spent with family and friends. Our government made an election promise to decrease gridlock, and we are doing just that. Our Premier and Minister of Transportation have made some great service expansion announcements already, and I'm excited to hear what more is to come. Can the Minister of Transportation share with the Legislature what his ministry is doing to get the people of Ontario moving? The Minister of Transportation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member from Thornhill for that question. She truly is a champion of uh, improving transportation uh, throughout the GPHA. Speaker, yesterday I had the pleasure to announce that our government for the people, Metrolinx, and the Woodbine Entertainment Group yes. are going to build a new GO station at Woodbine. Thank and you. listen to this, Mr. Speaker. This, this is the best news this House could ever hear, the fact that this station is going to be built and not cost the taxpayers a dime, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank my parliamentary assistant, a uh, member from Etobicoke Centre, for joining me yesterday for all the hard work she has continually done on this file. 
I also uh, would like to thank the support Councillor Ford showed at uh, the announcement as well, showing the municipality of, the, of Etobicoke is, is behind us 100 per cent. Mr. Speaker, I have more to say on this, but this is a great announcement for the province. It's the second of its kind that we're building using uh, the private sector to help build it at no cost to taxpayers. It's a good Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, through you, I'd like to thank the Minister of Transportation for that great answer. I think all of my colleagues will agree this is all good news for Ontarians, and yet another way our government is getting the people of Ontario moving. Public transit is vital for the people of Ontario, and yesterday's announcement by the Minister of Transportation is important to not only transit users in Etobicoke and Western Toronto, but the whole GTHA. Whether Ontarians are travelling for work, for school, to see a game, or just to meet a friend for coffee, our communities depend on our province's transportation system. This is why we need new, more efficient transit infrastructure to move people faster and ease the congestion on local roads and highways, and our government is delivering on that promise. Can the minister share more about the new GO station in Woodbine? Minister. Uh, thanks very much uh, for that second question. Mr. Speaker, this new house, our new station, excuse me, will be on Highway 27 near Woodbine Racing Track, right on the existing Kitchener Go rail line. The new station at Woodbine will help to increase transit access to nearby landmarks like Woodbine Mall, Humber College, University of Guelph at Humber, and the Etobicoke General Hospital. Our government for people is putting transit users and taxpayers first with our agreement that this new station will be paid for by our business partner, Woodbine Entertainment Group. Woodbine's plans for development around the station will bring new jobs, housing and entertainment to Rexdale. Transit-oriented development is an approach that allows us to take a more strategic look at our real estate portfolio. Mr. Speaker, this is a development that promises the best results at the best cost to taxpayers. The new GO station at Woodbine and Colorado are good news for transit riders. We have a lot more coming forward, and it's going to be benefiting not only GTHA, but Ontario as a whole. Ontario is on the move, Mr. Speaker. Up the clock. Restart the clock. Next question, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. 20 Windsor parents of children with autism are here today. They are angry with the Conservative government's decision to deny thousands of families crucial funding for autism supports and services. Meg is a mother of two kids under the age of five, both on the spectrum. She was at the Autism Roundtable in, in Windsor and felt that families uh, presented offer, uh, the families present offered reasonable suggestions, believing that they were being heard. Then, just days later, the full program was announced. Meg says her world was upended. Her hopes for her kids' future, her career, the happiness of her family were all dashed. April Perry, another parent from Windsor, helped organize a rally in Windsor opposing this PC plan. What does the Premier have to say to Meg and all the parents here today? There's lots more out on the lawn right now whose kids will suffer as a result of his phony consultation and callous cuts. Premier. Minister of Children and Community Social Services. Thank you very Mr. much, uh, Premier. And, uh, you know, to Meg and to April, uh, we have decided that we would have a priority of clearing the wait list for children who are languishing on it for years Order. on end. Member for Windsor West, come to order. Service, 23, out of I have to interrupt the minister and, and ask the person who's demonstrating you can't do that. And if you continue to do it, we'll have to ask you to leave. Minister can conclude her response. Look, it angers me that the government previous to this administration was running a program for where three West out of four children order. were denied service by their Ontario government. That is why we are moving Member toward Rosedale, an historic to investment of $321 million to support every child with autism in the province of Ontario. We are doubling the diagnostic Member for Windsor West, come to order. Hubs. We are going directly to find for parents Rosedale, that we can empower order. them to make the choices that are in the best interest of their children Response. so we can ensure that not one out of four children in Ontario are getting service, but four out of four children are receiving. Ask the opposition to come to order. 
Supplementary, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is also to the Premier, and I want to remind the Premier and the Minister responsible this is not just about a wait list. This is about services for people who need them in a rich province currently spending $1.2 billion on tax cuts for the wealthiest and for companies. I want to talk about Kate Logue from Ottawa, who is Desmond's, mo Desmond's mom. Desmond has high-spectrum autism. He has, through his therapy, said the words mom and dad for the first time. Speaker, in a rich province like Ontario, why is it appropriate that Kate has to cash in her RRSP to continue Desmond's therapy? Premier, Premier, is this appropriate? Is this the kind of Ontario you want to lead? Once again, I'll remind members to make your comments through the chair. The question has been referred to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much, Speaker. My heart goes out to Kate and to Desmond. My heart goes out to the 23,000 children who are being denied. Opposition, come to order. Leader of the opposition, come to order. That was endless. And I think we had to make a decision in order to ensure that every child with autism in the province for of Hamilton Mountain, would come receive some support. For Windsor what West, I come to order. To date from the New Democrats is what their plan is, how much that would cost. Why are they providing false hope to parents across Ontario? Ottawa we Centre, are come being to very order. Clear. Our priority is to clear the wait list. We are going to do that in the next 18 months. We are going to provide a seamless Hamilton transition Mountain. to the education Leader of the system. Leader the opposition, come that to order. That is what our plan is. We are leading with compassion, and we are going to implement this plan on April the 1st. Next question, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is uh, for the Premier. We need to take a moment here and look around. There are hundreds of people here, families who've come a long way. They've come a long way to express their genuine concern. They're going to be rallying on the front lawn of the legislature. They're here. Premier, will you join them on the front lawn right after question period? The Minister of Children, Community, Social Services. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Opposition, come to order. Um, the member from Ottawa South has a great deal of audacity to stand in this place after having worked for the former Premier, Dalton McGuinty, who took those same parents to court, who protested his previous administration and who they Waterloo, left a bankrupt system to. Not only was this Leader of the opposition a come to order. million dollar deficit, they, were, they left us, we inherited a broken autism program. So for 15 years, they had moments to look around, and they chose to allow a wait list to grow to 23 Member for Hamilton Mountain must who come to order. denied service from their Ontario government. The difference between me and the member from Ottawa South Leader of the opposition is I'm going to clear must that wait list with the help of this government so every single child with autism in the province of Ontario gets the support they need. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, but I, I can't thank uh, the member for that answer. So families are here today because they're asking for our help. Okay? They're here because they want someone to listen to their concerns, to sit down with them and work with them to ensure that their child's needs will be met. You know, our job here is to hear the voices that are hardest to hear. All these people, all these folks are here because they're the voice of those who cannot speak. And Premier, that's why you need to be on the front lawn and listening to them. It's important. It's very, very important. So Mr. I'm Government asking you again, services come to order. through you, Speaker, I'm asking the Premier two things. First, will he please come out to the front lawn of the legislature and spend some time with these families? And two, parents Question. have lost confidence and they need a fresh set of eyes and ears on this file. And I would ask that the Premier do that respectfully. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The question has been referred to the Minister. Speaker, that member lacks credibility on this file. That member was part of a government that took children, parents of children with autism to court. It was part, he was part of a government that bankrupted the Ontario Autism Program that forced me and this government for an emergency $102 million just to keep the program running 
for 25 per cent of the children. We have decided that we would double our investment into diagnostic hubs so that we could clear the wait list on diagnosis that his government allowed to fester. We have decided we are going to go to a direct funding model, which parents have asked for, so that they can go direct to get the best support that their children need. We are going to make sure that we clear the wait list of 23,000 children so that all those children have a fighting chance. But, Speaker, let me be perfectly clear. We are motivated Response. by clearing this wait list and a seamless entry and transition into our education system, and that is what this government will do on April 1st. Thank you. Next question, the member for Flamborough. Flamborough. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Speaker, we have brought forward our Made in Ontario plan that will take action to preserve and protect our environment without imposing another tax. Yesterday, the minister released his waste discussion paper that will play a crucial role in our government's next steps towards cleaning up our province. My private member's motion, which will be debated later this afternoon, helps to address the need for diverting waste out of our landfills by encouraging retailers and consumers to donate their used clothing to charity. Reducing the amount of textile waste in our landfills is an important issue that needs to be addressed given the environmental cost of today's fast fashion trends. Mr. Speaker, can the minister explain why supporting initiatives like mine Question. is important to help sustain Ontario's environment for the future? Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Speaker, uh, through you to the member from uh, flamborough Granbrook, and, and congratulations to her on the private member's bill that she's bringing in. This is just the kind of initiative, just the kind of constructive initiative that, frankly, we'd like to see from across uh, from the NDP. But it is it is absolutely aligned to the sorts of things that are are necessary. We as Ontarians put a ton of waste each into landfill, a ton of waste each every year. And Mr. Speaker, we are diverting we are diverting less than 30 percent of that waste. That is not acceptable in 2019. We have to do better. We have to do better through constructive proposals like the one the member brings. That is what our waste proposals are talking about. That is why we are consulting with Ontarians. We are going to be talking about organics. We are going to be talking about plastics. We are going to be talking about diversion. We are going to be talking about all the best technologies that are available in the world to make sure that we are taking the litter Lots. off our streets and we are putting waste where it belongs, not in the landfills. Here, here. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. More than 24 billion pounds of unwanted clothing ends up in landfills. Only about 1% of donated clothing is actually recycled. We are hoping that this motion will encourage manufacturers to invest in the technology to recycle more clothing. Speaker, this is just one example of a way Ontarians can reduce waste that is headed for landfills. I've spoken to many constituents who have great ideas to share, and I want to play a part in cleaning up our province. Ontarians understand that real environmentalism starts close to home, and they're ready to move forward on a cleaner, more beautiful Ontario. Can the minister share with this House what goal the Waste Discussion Paper hopes to achieve? Thank you. Minister. Thank you. Again, through you, Mr. Speaker, to the member. Uh, these are exactly the kinds of questions that our paper asks. What can Ontarians do? What can producers do? Again, the, the, member, the bill that the member is presenting works collaboratively with producers. That's what we need to do in partnership with producers, municipalities, and all the interested parties. Mr. Speaker, to the question, we will be looking at how we decrease the amount of waste going to landfill, increase the overall diversion rate, which, as I said, has been stalled at 30 percent for 15 years. Not good enough. We're committing to making producers responsible for the waste generated by their products and packaging. We're going to outline ways to explore explore how we get value from waste, and we create less waste as a result, and we're dedicated to providing clear rules around compostable, pro compostable products, packaging, and support a sustainable economy for Ontario. Mr. Speaker, this is another example of this government's efforts to balance a healthy environment and a healthy economy. That's what we'll do for Ontario. Thank you. Next question, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. With us today is my constituent, Susan, who has a wonderful son with autism spectrum disorder and who has high needs. Right now, he receives highly skilled one-on-one -on -one care. He has someone that helps him use the toilet, has taught him to speak a few words, and helps him stay safe. 
That level of care costs over $70,000 a year. Her family currently receives support through the Ontario Autism Program, but now, in less than 30 days, her family will only receive $5,000. Can the Premier explain to Susan why her son doesn't deserve to receive adequate funding so that her son can stay safe? Members, please Children take your and seat. Social Services. Questions been addressed to the Premier. Referred to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much, uh, Premier, and thank you very much, uh, Speaker, to the member opposite and to Susan. Um, uh, her, her story uh, is one that I've heard throughout Ontario. I've also heard from 23,000 others who are being denied service and really had no hope at the end of the tunnel. And, Speaker, our motivation is to ensure that four out of four children, 100 per cent of the children who require support from their Ontario government, receive it. That wasn't the case under the previous Liberal administration. The fair, equitable and sustainable approach is to make sure that we double our investment into diagnostic hubs, go directly to fund parents. I'm going to ask the person who is disrupting Parliament to stop. She has to leave. Minister can conclude her response. Thanks, Speaker. So that's why we're moving to a direct funding model so parents can have up to $140,000 per child so that they can choose the services that best work for their family. But, Speaker, let me be perfectly clear. This is the, the program that we're implementing on April the 1st. Our motivation is to clear the wait list so every child in Ontario with autism, not just one out of four, receives support from their Ontario government. That is Order. the commitment we have made, that's the plan that we have put forward, and that's the plan that will be implemented on April the 1st. Opposition will come to order. Supplementary to Member for Essex. Speaker again to the Premier. I want to assure uh, members of the gallery visitors here today, families, that New Democrats hear you and we hear those out on the front lawn. I'm going to interrupt the member once again. You're not here to address the people who are in the galleries. You're here to make your comments through the speaker. Speaker, speaker from my riding, Lana and Rob are the parents of a beautiful boy named Mason. Mason has moderate to severe autism. Lana confided in me that she can't afford Mason's therapy on her own. He'll be five by the time the new plan is in motion, and the funding that he will receive will only cover a few hours of therapy a month or two. Lana says, and I quote, giving them an hour or two a week requires them to start over every session of therapy. This will never help our child progress. In fact, there will be a lot more regression before ever moving forward, end quote. Question. Premier, why is your government forcing Mason to go without the therapy that he desperately needs? Question's been referred to the minister. Members, please take your seats. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thanks uh, very much to the member opposite for bringing uh, Lana and Rob's uh, story and telling me a little bit more about Mason. Our motivation is to make sure that every child with autism in the province of Ontario receives some level of support from their Ontario government. That wasn't the case, Speaker. It was unfair, unconscionable, inequitable, and unsustainable to only support one in four children or 8,400 children who were in service right now. Order. We, have, uh, we have an obligation to every child in the province of Ontario who has autism to receive a level of support from their Ontario government. That's what I'm committed to doing. That is the plan this government is putting forward, and that will be the plan that will be implemented on April the 1st so that we can clear the wait list of 23,000 children that were not receiving any level of support from their Ontario government. That is our motivation. That is what we are going to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, the member for Mississauga Moulton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. I'd like to thank Minister, Premier, and Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs for attending the job announcement at SodaStream last Tuesday. It's great to see a global company like SodaStream investing in our province, opening their first ever production facility in Canada, Order. right here in Ontario, creating 28 new jobs in my riding of Mississauga Malton. I know the Minister and our Mountain entire PC warned. caucus have been working hard, 
creating an environment where businesses want to grow, invest, and more importantly, create new jobs. Could the minister please outline the House why global companies like SodaStream are choosing to set up a manufacturing facility right here in Ontario? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister for Economic Development, Job Creation. And Thanks, uh, Speaker. It was uh, great to be out in the members' riding on Tuesday morning as we celebrated the grand opening of a new facility. An Israeli company known as the Island of Peace in Israel. It's doing outstanding work in Israel, making a great product that is sustainable and environmentally friendly. And uh, I was pleased to be there along with the member who's doing a great job in Mississauga, Malton, and my yeah. friend. Uh, Minister of uh, uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food and, and the Premier to celebrate this company. Companies like SodaStream are choosing to set up and expand here in Canada, and that's great news. And I think it proves that the work that we're doing is getting through to companies not just across Ontario, that we're making a change in the way that Ontario does business, but companies around the world that are looking to locate here. We're doing things like cutting red tape, and I'm getting great support from all of the different uh, ministers around Response. the table and other members of our caucus who are helping us eliminate that burdensome red tape, reducing electricity costs, stabilizing those costs, and reducing taxes as well to make sure that Ontario is open for business to all who want to invest in here. Supplementary. Through you, Mr. Speaker and Minister, thank you so much for your commitment. With overall unemployment at 10 percent and with 25 percent unemployment in youth in the riding of Mississauga Malton. I know the businesses and workers in my riding are glad that our government is making Ontario a better place to invest and create jobs. After 15 years of having a government that never saw a piece of red tape they didn't like, our government is flipping the script and reducing the regulatory burden. We are making Ontario open for business and, more importantly, open for jobs. The announcement at Soda Stream is a proof that our plan is working, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of my riding. Can the minister please inform the House how our government will continue to make Ontario Question. an attractive place to invest? Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thanks, Speaker, and thanks again to the member from Mississauga, Malton. Uh, it's great to celebrate, like we did on Tuesday, a brand new company that's expanding here in Ontario. But I can tell you that every day businesses are deciding where they're going to locate around the world. You know, be it here in Ontario, which is obviously where we hope that they choose, uh, but Quebec and Michigan and Ohio, you name it, they're all competing for these businesses to locate in their jurisdiction, Speaker. And that's why we want to make those jobs land here in Ontario and do everything that we can to do that. And that's why, as the member references, we eliminated or repealed the job-killing parts of Bill 148, which was brought in by Kathleen Wynne and the Liberal government. I can tell you that in the meetings that we've had with business owners, Speaker, since we became government, they are singing from the rooftops. When they get the news that we are eliminating red tape and making it easier for them to do business in Ontario, things like Bill 47, the Making Ontario Open for Business Act, and now the Restoring Ontario's Competitiveness Act of Bill 66. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday, I received a letter from seven-year-old Lily. She has a question for this government, and here's what she wrote. My name is Lily. I have a twin named Landon, and I love him so much. It was bad to take the money from the kids who need help to learn stuff. Please help the government to change their minds. How would they feel if they had a brother with autism? I hope they would help him. Thank you from Lily. So my question is to this government and to this entire uh, Conservative caucus, what are you doing to these kids in the province of Ontario? It is unethical. It is unconscionable. You must do better for Lily's brother and for all of those parents and all of those kids that are on the front lawn of Queen's Park today. I'm going to ask the Deputy Premier to respond. Children, Community and Social Services. Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Premier. Uh, and I appreciate the member opposite and, and her passion. And uh, I, I think it's important 
that we considered the 23,000 children who were being denied service, the 23,000 children who were not being supported by their Ontario government, the 23,000 children who were on a wait list that were not getting any level of support from their Ontario government. What's unconscionable is that the previous Liberal administration left us a broken and broke system Opposition, come to order. denied these children, three out of four children in Ontario, service. That is why I had Opposition, to, to order. for an extra $102 million to ensure that 8,400 children currently or uh, on their way into the system would receive support, but also to give us the time so we could redesign a program and invest $321 million into all children. Response. That's why we are doubling our investment into the diagnostic hubs, and that's why we are going to a direct funding model, and that is why we are going to regulate the professionals in this industry. Thank you. Supplementary, the member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Again to the Acting Premier. Speaker, Lindsay Frechette came on the bus today from London West on behalf of her 11-year-old son, Felix. When Felix was diagnosed with autism at age three, he was also diagnosed with cancer. Lindsay says if she had been told, here is your budget to pay for his cancer treatment, and when you have used it up, too bad. Felix would have died. Lindsay describes life as an autism parent as wait and fight, wait and fight. Felix waited years for diagnosis, and Lindsay fought for his treatment. He's been doing well with current autism program supports, and Lindsay is terrified of what will happen to him when those supports are gone. Speaker, why is this government abandoning Felix and parents like Lindsay? Minister. Take their seats. Minister. Um, the, the example of Felix having to wait forever almost for years for diagnosis is exactly the, the changes that we want to make so that we can clear the wait list so that children will be diagnosed qu more quickly and that we can then start to fund their parents so Order. that they can choose the types of supports that best support their child, whether that is behavioral support whether that is caregiver training, whether that is respite, or finally technological aids. That is the movement we want to go toward because we believe every child in Ontario with autism should receive support. The Ontario New Democrats clearly think we should only be supporting 25 per cent of the children. Order. I think that's unacceptable. That's what's unconscionable. It was inequitable. It was unfair. And the system that we inherited seven Response. months ago was unsustainable. I would ask the person who is disrupting Parliament to stop. You, you have to leave. Okay. Once again, you, you cannot disrupt Parliament. Next question. The member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. Our government has been working tirelessly since we've been elected to get Ontario's economy back on track. That means listening, listening to the large job employers and, uh, employers and job creators and key sectors of our economy of how we can support them. Unlike the previous government that stood in front of employers and got in their way, we are standing behind the employers, pushing, their forward, pushing them forward, reducing the red tape, reducing electricity costs and creating good paying jobs. Many people talk about issues in our mining sector, and I understand that our Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines has been doing a lot of work in this sector and has, been, and st has struck a working group at the last PDAC Question. meeting. Could you please elaborate on this group that you struck, Minister? Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Thank Mines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the member uh, from Barrie, Innisfil, uh, asking this important question. Not a moment too soon, Mr. Speaker. We struck a mining working group that will be busy over the next couple of years, fundamentally transforming 
uh, a sector that sadly has moved largely out of province when it comes to capital, Mr. Speaker, who are dispirited and are calling on this government to reduce red tape, Mr. Speaker, to make tax conditions more favourable, to move Ontario into the pole position as the preferred destination to do business of mining and actually mining. Mr. Speaker, we assembled business leaders in Indigenous engagement, the finance sector, engineering, people who build mines and operate mines, Mr. Speaker. They were there, emboldened by the presence of the Premier, Mr. Speaker, taking notes, making sure that these things in the coming months Response. and in the coming years will be supported by the NDP as we re-establish Ontario's place and position as the number one place to do business when it comes to mining. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the minister for sending the clear message that Ontario's government for the people is making the mining sector open for business. It's a key piece of our government's broader plan to make our province the economic engine of Canada again, stimulating our economy and going on to create more jobs, jobs like in the mining sector. And Mr. Speaker, these are good paying jobs. And I'm excited that our government is reducing their red tape so that we can be even more competitive in this global economy and the global mining industry. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask the minister if he can elaborate on the positive impacts that the mining sector has on the Ontario economy. Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it was just great to be back at uh, PDAC. 87 years, they've been the face of a vibrant, sustainable minerals industry, Mr. Speaker. 8,000 members, 25,000 people attended this year from over 135 countries. In Ontario, mining matters, Mr. Speaker. 26,000 direct jobs, 50,000 indirect jobs. They, in many instances, build our towns and cities across northern Ontario from the ground up. But the NDP member for Tamiskaming Cochrane said apparently this week that the problem isn't regulations. He should tell Valet that. He should tell Glenn Core, Moron, Barrett Gold, Member the Ontario Timmons, Prospectors Association. They may be the no drilling party, Mr. Speaker. They may be in the business of Bond, not doing prospecting. But we stand with the mining sector. Leader of the Mr. Opposition, Speaker, come to order. We're committed to be the place, the destination for mining business worldwide. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Applause. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Johnny and Sue Lee are here from Brampton East. Their two children, Michaela and Taylor, both have autism. Before, Michaela couldn't talk and would have violent outbursts. But with therapy, that changed. She now talks with her family, listens to her parents, plays with her siblings. Her brother Taylor, however, has been on the wait list for a year and a half. Under this government's changes to autism program, Taylor will not be able to get the same access to therapy that helped his sister succeed. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier look into the eyes of Johnny and Sue Lee, they're there in the front row, look into their eyes and tell them that their family doesn't deserve support? Has referred the question to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you bringing uh, Johnny yeah. and Suli's. Uh, um. You cannot disrupt Parliament if you you're going to be asked to leave. You have to leave. You can't disrupt Parliament. You have to stop. Minister, respond. 
Speaker. Um, Taylor is, is a reason that we wanted to move toward these reforms so that we can clear the wait list of 23,000 children. Children were trickling off order. that wait list. They were on a the previous on come to order. That was simply unacceptable to me and to this government, which is why we are moving to clearing the 23,000 wait list within the next 18 months, Speaker. Under our reforms, families will receive a childhood Opposition budget so they can purchase order. eligible services Bonds. that they value the most from the providers that they trust. Speaker, we are moving to this model because we believe every child with autism in the province of Ontario deserves support from their Thank you. You have to you have to leave. Member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Due to heartless changes made to the Ontario Autism Program, eight-year-old Vincent from Brampton will be forced out of therapy and forced into school. Vincent is not ready for this change. He's come so far, Mr. Speaker. To pull Vincent out of therapy now, especially without a transition plan, will cause him to regress. Schools are not prepared to accommodate Vincent and children like him. Will the Premier tell us how much more pain must Ontario families endure before the Premier recognizes that this is a bad plan and direct his minister to go back to the drawing board? Members, please take your minister of Children and Community Social. The question has already been referred to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very Services. much, Speaker. This will be the plan on April the 1st. The NDP are providing false hope to families. We are moving forward with this plan. Thank you. Again, you cannot disrupt Parliament from the visitors' galleries. I have to ask that the person protesting be removed. You have to leave. You have to leave as well. Do it, Doug. Do it. You have to leave. Doug's a cow. He's not going to do it. Doug, step in and make okay. it right now. This is all you are. Premier, you've avoided the question. Are you going to join us up there? You have to leave as well. You're avoiding the question. Meet us up front. Next question. Please to recognize the member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is. Just a second. Of my, my question Mississauga is to East the Cooksville. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Another year has gone by, and the federal government still hasn't fixed the crisis at the border. According to the federal government's website, the RCMP intercepted 888 illegal border crossers seeking to enter Canada between ports of entry last January. Once processed, we know a significant number <coughs> of crossers are migrating to Ontario while they wait for their asylum claim to be heard, placing an added strain on our already stretched municipal services. The Toronto Sun reported last week that the city officials say an average of 18 to 20 new refugee claimants are seeking shelter each day. Can the minister tell this House how our government is holding the federal government accountable for their failed border policies? Good question. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you very much. Speaker, as the minister also responsible for uh, immigration and refugee resettlement in the province of Ontario, uh, we have been working with the federal government, calling on them to, uh, to reimburse this province up to $200 million and escalating in costs associated with the irregular uh, illegal border crossings that's happening in the province of Quebec. To date, we have uh, negotiated a terms of reference with the federal minister, Bill Blair, and we are looking actively to getting uh, compensation for our two major municipal 
municipalities, the City of Ottawa and the City of Toronto, who, uh, who have incurred almost $100 million in uh, emergency shelter costs that are placing an additional pressure on our system. We're going to continue to press for additional costs that we have received as a result of this in the education sector and through legal aid. So I'm looking forward to uh, working with the member and with the federal government to ensure that we, uh, we get this under control. Thank you. That concludes question period for this morning. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Windsor West has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to her question given by the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services concerning the Ontario Autism Program. This matter will be debated Tuesday, March 19 at 6 p.m. I would now ask the pages to assemble. And I should have mentioned earlier, in the speaker's gallery today is Kirsten Colquin, who is a teacher at Centennial Public School in Georgetown, who is visiting her student in one of our pages, Siwa Agarwal. Welcome to Queen's Park. Are they all here? Now that they're all here, it's time for us to say a word of thanks to our legislative pages. Our pages are smart, trustworthy, and hardworking. They are indispensable to the effective functioning of this chamber, and we are indeed fortunate to have them here. Our pages depart, having made many new friends, with a greater understanding of parliamentary democracy and memories that will last a lifetime. Each of them will go home, continue their studies, and no doubt will contribute to their communities, their province, and their country in very important ways. We expect great things from all of you. Maybe some of you will someday take your seats in this House as members or work here as staff. We wish you all well. Please join me in showing our appreciation to this group of legislative people. Stands in recess until 1 p.m.